All right, so, so as some of you will have seen, I have got a shiny new bike and I always get a lot of interest. Uh, people like to geek out a bit. I'm guilty of it myself. And you know, you, you like to know exactly what I'm running and any tips or tricks to make things run a bit sweeter. So today um, I'm gonna try to keep this shorter, not like a 20 minute long video, uh, just a few details on what parts I run and why I run them. So first things first, I'm running the 2016 red inspired arcade now i said in the last vlog this is a color i'm absolutely stoked i mean look how shiny this is absolutely stunning i've wanted a red frame for years and inspired have absolutely outdone themselves with this one so best color yet absolutely amazing to match the frame i've got the arcade forks of course i like them in black it gives the the kind of bmx look i find sometimes if you have a matching frame and fork color kind of looks a bit unbalanced to me so I like the forks and the handlebars to be the same colour. And continuing the arcade theme, I'm on the inspired arcade bars. I prefer these bars over say the Tratec High Rise just because they're a little bit flatter, they feel a bit more BMXy, and they don't hurt my wrists as much so yep I absolutely love them. We've got dogs over here, you want to see my frame as well? Oh maybe not. The next and possibly last inspired product I use is the uh, tripod seat, that's right. And I absolutely love how low profile these things go. Look how tight that tire clearance is at the back there. They're super light, super strong, and look really nice as well, I think. What's not to like? The next thing that's closely related to inspired is Triotech. I have the 80 by 40 degree stem means I can get a nice high front end and reduce the number of headset spaces that I need. And speaking of headset spaces, this is a 15mm one, which I happen to find in pretty much the same colour as the frame, so pretty stoked on that. And I know I've mentioned this on um, one of the arcade builds I did in the Steel is Real uh, vlog. Integrated headset, so you don't need to press any bearings into the frame. Everything goes so nice and neat together, and I think that looks absolutely spot on. Now, wheel-wise, I am running the usual setup I always do. Hope hubs, which, yeah, you can't, you can't beat them. They're just strong, good bearings, good weight, and never had any issues. Certainly not with the front one, and the back ones have always been super reliable as well. I'm running that with sapin spokes onto red alloy nipples. And I've talked about alloy nipples in the past. I just find I can get tighter spokes with them. Uh, alloy nipples are softer, they don't bind quite so much um, as brass nipples do and I just absolutely love them. I've never snapped one and yeah, you know, maybe if you're riding a road bike and you're riding through salt, it's not the best thing to get, but for a bike like this, not an issue. And of course I'm running the good old spank rims. These are the Race 33s, the latest model and yeah, the wheels are just fit and forget, you know, they just work and work and work. I've never really buckled one, I've never dented one, I've never broken one, so absolutely recommended. And the same with the back wheel, we've got the Hope Pro 4 rear hub and I actually managed to find a uh, single seat speed kit with a red cog. I uh, thought that might look pretty cool. I wanted to get rid of as much silver on here as possible and I think that was, I quite like it, I'm not sure what you guys think but uh, I'm, I'm into it. And of course I'm running 2216 as usual, although these bikes do come with 2215 as that's what I used to run and it's quite a good intermediate gear if you've come from a BMX background. And of course on the outside of the rims got the Continental tyres, these are the Danny McCaskill, I think they're, are they the Air Kings? I can't, I can't remember, I probably should know. Never had the tread come off, they've got good grip, they last for ages. If you think they're a bit expensive then just bear in mind that these will last probably two or three times longer than any other cheaper tyre, so pretty good value for money, I think. Brakes wise, I'm on the Maguras. This is an MT6, which I find is absolutely amazing for just getting a bit more modulation, you know, good for the stoppies and get extra pad clearance in there as well. So if you're having issues with pads rowing, then that's the brake for you. Absolutely no issues with strength as well. I've run one of these on the rear and never broken a caliper, never had any issues, never had any leaking, so yep, really, really good. I'm also running Hope adapters on there because I find that the some of the strongest that I've used. Pads-wise, I'm running EBC, I think they're reds I've got on the front. I find they're a little bit softer, they don't have quite a high initial bite and 
It's just really, really good for the stoppies, so another product I'd recommend. On the back, I'm running an MT7. I have run an MT6, like I said, but I do find the MT7 has just that little bit more grunt to it. It just has that little bit more reassurance that it's not going to slip out. Uh, you do get a tiny bit of a weight penalty, but to honestly, it's, it's hardly anything. And I'm actually running the MT5 pads on the back. I think they're just fairly standard ones. Absolutely insane power. And I'm actually running 200mm rotors, front and rear. These frames, the warranties are only for 180s, but that's just to cover Inspire's back. I've never had any issues with 200s. Uh, I've never broken a frame on the disc mount, so yeah. You could probably get away with it, but don't say I told you so if you ever have any issues. As for the cranks, I'm running Truvative Descendant Cranks. Uh, these have the inspired bash guard, which are specially designed to fit these. Uh, I'm not sure if they're available yet. I've been told they possibly come on some full bikes, but when they are available, definitely get yourself one of these. I've absolutely bashed this thing and it's held up absolutely amazingly. It's so small, it's so light. It's actually one of my favorite things on this bike. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm using a KMC, I think it's a K610 or a Z610 chain. This one I actually got from Asia or somewhere just because I wanted to be a bit more pimp. I wanted a black chain and I couldn't find one anywhere and I eventually found one. I really like it, but to be honest with you, a silver chain will look pretty good as well. Uh, but I highly recommend these chains. It's what I always use, hardly ever snap them. I think I've maybe snapped one in five years. So if you want a strong chain, I'd recommend one of these. And the last item we've got is the Crank Brother Stamp Pedal. It says that. This red ones, actually because Danny got sent a red pair, my pair got lost in transit coming back from the Philippines, so I think it looks quite good. Maybe a bit too much red overkill, but it's not my fault. But as far as pedals go, I love the extra large platform. They've got good like, in-between grips, so they're not like the grippiest pedals I've ever had, but I do find with 510 shoes, it's quite easy to get too grippy and get stuck to the bike if you get jumped off. So yeah, absolutely love these, just big, thin, and I don't get stuck to them. Well, actually, there's one last product which I change all the time. I actually only put these on today and I've never ridden them. So don't see this as a recommendation. I just like to swap and change my grips all the time. And these are Ergons, uh, what make model are they? Ah, uh, the, the GD ones. So the Ergon GD1 grips. These are actually thinner at that end and they get fatter at that end, which appeals to me because I like a thin grip, but also like a bit more padding at the edges. So I thought I'd give these a try. Other than these grips, I really like the Danny McCaskill lizard skin grips. They're the, some of the thinnest lock-on grips I've tried. Absolutely love them. I also really, really like the ODI, is it Stay Strong grips? They are super soft compound, but actually they last so, so long. They're pretty grippy without gloves. And yeah, they last me about a year, which is like nuts. My grips never last me a year. I'll probably change them before the end of the year anyway, but I, I swap and change my grips all the time. So just because I've got these on there doesn't mean that I recommend them. I'm just trying them out. So I think grips are such an important part of the bike. It's good to get a pair that you like. Right, so that's the actual list of physical parts I've got on the bike. There's a couple of things um, like tips and tricks or just slight alternatives that I've used on it. So I'll just run down some of those. First off, bolts. Now, I've pretty much tried to eliminate every steel bolt that I can, which I've pretty much managed to do, I think. I'm just trying to have a think. Um, I think there's maybe one steel bolt on my bike, which is this little guy. The tensioner bolt on the back, that's my only steel bolt I've got on there. All the rest are either titanium, like my axle bolts. I always put those to titanium, that's a massive weight saving. But I do also have aluminium bolts. I use alloy bolts up at the steerer tube there, just because they're not really doing anything. There's no like, shearing forces going through there. All they have to do is tight and clamp, and I think that's a pretty safe place to use aluminium bolts. Uh, I've never had a problem, never had one snap. I just got these off eBay and yeah, seem to work really well. Now I've got on the stem, got titanium on the front just because I think, you know, I want a bit more strength there. And yeah, just again, eBay bolts do the job. Never had a slippage, never had any problems, even though these bars are quite tall and have quite a lot of leverage. I've never had my bars move. 
Right, while we're up at the levers, the other thing I do is, hopefully you can see it, I have some moldable rubber which I put on the end of my lever blades there, just because when you're doing a big drop and you're pulling your brake, when you land, your hand actually turns back and sometimes the lever hits you in the back of the knuckle. So having a bit of rubber on there, it stops my knuckle from getting cut and it works absolutely brilliantly. That stuff's called Sugru and I just get it off Amazon. Now going back to alloy bolts, I have an alloy bolt on my front axle right there. Now that seems like a bit of a dodgy place you'd think, but actually the axle is supported by the forks so there's no shearing force going through that bolt. A bit like the stem clamps, all that bolt is doing is putting clamping force down. So it's in theory a safe place to use them and so far it's been absolutely fine. Um, back to tie bolts of course, disc rotor bolts are titanium as well. I've had these on a few bikes now, never stripped them, never had any problems and yeah just another place you can save weight. And still with the titanium bolts, of course I have no steel bolts on here so brake caliper bolts, all four of them on that bit and that bit are titanium. I've had these same bolts for um, actually not these ones, these ones are new, but uh, my previous bolts I had for about four years and never a single problem. Keep on repeating that, no problem, no problem, but that's pretty much why I run all the parts I do, because I don't have any problems with them. Well, on one bolt I almost forgot, my seat clamp bolt in there is aluminium as well, just because you don't need to do it that tight and it's just another place to save weight. On. Also a kind of bolt, uh, the cassette lock ring, I guess is a bolt of sorts, that is aluminium it's an easy place to save weights again there's no forces going through that all it has to do is hold on the cassette and yeah that's such an easy place to save weight anyway that's enough about bolts the other thing i do of course i have my front cable running through the stem the top tube on these forks ideal to let that happen and instead of running a zip tie to fasten it i actually have a strip of velcro which absolutely does the job perfectly it's really low profile so it doesn't stick out very much and it's reusable so if you're out and you need to take your brake off uh, just takes two seconds to whip that off two seconds to put back on if you need to unlike a zip tie which you have to cut off so yeah get one of those if you can so one question I get asked all the time with this new bike is am I still tubeless am I tubeless front and rear and the answer is yes I am still tubeless and yes I have both tires converted so this is a fully tubeless bike and actually on the back I've tried something different now hopefully this will pick it up but what you can see there is actually the strip of inner tube now I've gone for the old school technique of a stretched inner tube over the rim and then the tire put on and instead of just cutting the tube and letting it flap about I've actually glued the tube onto the tire to make a kind of tubular setup. The idea is that would resist uh, folding so if, even if the tire folds off it's still going to be sealed because the inner tube will go with it so that's a theory. I've not really put it to the test yet but it seals, it's inflated and yeah I'll keep you guys updated. Um, the other system obviously works really well, I've got that on the front wheel and yeah I'd, if you haven't gone tubeless yet I'd recommend it it's so good not having to worry about punches so yeah I think that's about it so I'm not too sure what other details there are uh, crank length is 175 I'd normally go for 170s but Inspired sent me these and I think they could only get in 175s um, I don't know how high my bars are I could probably measure them and put them in the description um, what else is there? I always have my chain really quite tight. I don't like a chain which bangs around. I don't know how you competition boys can ride with your chain slapping on everything. Sounds absolutely horrible. Um, spoke length, if you're wanting to build these wheels, I use 228mm on the rear both sides, 3 cross, and 228 on the disc side and 230 on the non-disc side. Shush your more hen, be quiet. So there you have it guys, that's a rundown of all the parts I run. I did a far more detailed bike check video um, like last year with my old bike. Now if you want to know why I like the geometry of this bike, if you want to know why I run my handlebars at certain angles, um, that video will tell you that, but I want to keep this one short and sweet. Now I've probably forgotten a few details, so if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I will happily answer them if I can, uh, but otherwise that is my bike. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
and if you want one of these bikes head over to Tighty Bikes and they will get one built up for you either custom or in one of inspired bikes and they can ship it worldwide so yeah highly recommended get one guys that was actually perfect timing because it's actually beginning to rain a little bit now so that's my bike see you later guys have a good one